and welcome to the Green Bay Packers edition of The Grueling Truth, brought to you by Gridiron Mall, a new interactive app that lets you call what you think the offense or defense will do in a live NFL game, and then see what others around the country pick as well. That's Gridiron Mall. Go to gridironmall.com. I am Evan Wittalison, joined as always by Troy Trotovic, and we are here to talk Green Bay Packers and the Denver Broncos. The Packers had a bye week last week, so we didn't do a preview show last week because it would be kind of weird previewing a bye week. That would be kind of weird. Not a whole lot to talk about. Uh, So we decided to take the week off um, and come to you this week talking Packers and the Broncos since they both teams are coming off the bye week. And now we get to talk about the the two undefeated teams, uh, uh, the Packers and the Broncos, and uh, give our thoughts on the outcome of the game. So before we jump into the show, I'm going to bring in my my co-host here, Troy. How are you doing today, Troy? Oh, doing great. Doing great. Some crazy weather out here in Pennsylvania, though. We got uh, the sirens going on behind me, so excuse the siren noise behind me, but we've had some uh, very high winds and storms rolling through western PA uh, this evening. So excuse the sirens if you can hear them in the background. I can't do much about them. But other than that, things are great. I'm ready to talk Packers again. One week off, Evan, and it seems like it was months. It really seems like it was months since the Packers played last. But they got a huge game coming up this week as we're going to talk about it. And before we actually get into the Packer preview, wanted to get your quick thoughts. Overall, NFL, you're looking... Deep in the season, I mean, week seven already, five undefeated teams, three teams going into the bye undefeated. When's the last time you can remember, Evan, teams this deep into the season being undefeated and, you know, I'll put it this way, chasing perfection. I mean, I know there's a long season to go, but normally by week three, four, you only got one or two teams left that are undefeated. You're rolling into, into this week with five undefeated teams, now granted one will one's going to fall from the rain because two are playing each other, but when's the last time you can remember this many teams this deep into the season chasing perfection? I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't know. It's, I don't recall. I can't remember the last time I've seen these many teams undefeated uh, after week six. Um, you know, this should be going forward. This should be where teams start to – you know, start to fall, as we know, one team will fall this week as the Packers and Broncos are playing. And if the Packers do win and the Panthers do win, that's getting the Packers and Panthers play each other next next week. So that would be another game of unbeatens playing each other that, you know, it could be another unbeaten team falling. So I don't know how long it's been. It seems like it's been quite a while, but... Uh, you know, a lot of good teams. And I think the best, you know, I think one of the top teams in the NFL right now, Troy, isn't even undefeated. They're sitting at five and two in Arizona. Arizona's playing great football right now. Bruce Arian, Arians is a great coach. I think uh, your fans out in Pittsburgh are kicking themselves for uh, forcing him out as offensive coordinator. But he's just doing a great job in Arizona. And that defense Arizona has is quite nasty. Uh, Packers, uh, you know, obviously playing well. The Panthers are playing well. The the uh, the Broncos are playing well. The Bengals the, and the Patriots are all playing really good, really good football right now. But we're going to see what happens in the near future. And you know, some of these teams are going to play one another. Things might start getting tougher. Uh, you know, it's tough to win in the National Football League uh, week to week. The the Chargers, which gave the Packers everything the Packers had one week. Uh, if it wasn't for a big fourth quarter by Phillip Rivers and the Chargers, the Chargers are getting destroyed by the Oakland Raiders. It just shows you how folk, how the NFL is very week to week. And so we could start seeing things change. And first thing I want to mention, the Packer fans, and anyone that knows me know I'm one of the biggest Packer fans around. Um, I'm, I'm quite the Packer homer. But I'm seeing on Facebook and Twitter people freaking out in a positive way that the Packers have the number one ranked defense in the NFL. Now, they have the number one scoring defense in the NFL, giving up 16.8 points per game. But here's the thing. They had a bye week, so nobody else played. So, of course, and I don't mean to rain on anybody's parade, 
the defense just play much better. But because nobody played, of course the Packers' stats are going to improve. But they're still 14th in yards, they're 12th in passing yards, and they're 22nd against the run. Now they got to, you know, they've been better against the run, and they've been decent against the pass. But they got to, you know, they're keeping teams out of the end zone, which is good. Um, but that yard, 355 yards per game, in my opinion, needs to come down a little bit because teams are going to start finding ways to score eventually. The NFL, a lot of very smart teams. But with that said, going to jump to the you know, Packers offense, um, the offense hasn't been playing as good as the defense, and I, I think it's been quite a while since we've gotten to say that, Troy. The Packers are averaging, uh, they are averaging 27.3 points per game, but they're not uh, they're not rushing the ball the best lately. Um, Eddie Lacy's been a little shooken up. James Starks now has a hip injury, um, so that could be a factor in the game. Uh, they're 22nd passing the football right now, and a lot of that has to do with the health at wide receiver. But with uh, bye week, Devontae Adams should be getting healthy. He looks to go, good to go. Ty Montgomery should be uh, might be getting healthy. It looks like Adams is on track to play, but Montgomery might not. Um, be able to play, but we'll see. Starks was uh, held, uh, he was held out of practice on Wednesday, um, but he, he also spent the entire bye week uh, working on that hip injury. So that's a concern right there. These injuries to the Packers are piling up. Lacey's ankle is still a little, uh, a little, you know, a little concerning. Hopefully that ankle is uh, able to able to heal. But Randall Cobb Troy is right now not on the injury report. So it doesn't mean he's 100%, but it means that he's uh, healthy enough for the first time all year. He's not on the injury report. You know, a couple big areas the Packers are doing really well in. They've uh, they've gotten 23 sacks on the year, but they've only allowed 11. Uh, they've uh, scored 19 touchdowns uh, this season. They're 10 and 11 from field goals. Uh, you know, turnover ratio is plus six, and they're they're doing pretty decent scoring in the red zone. Um, the one thing is Aaron Rodgers, uh, he's looked a little handcuffed as of late because his wide receivers, he, a lot of injuries at the wide receiver position. So we'll see if uh, they can come out. But this is going to be a big test for the Packers, Troy. The Broncos, they have one of the top-ranked defenses in the NFL. They're third in points allowed, uh, average, allowed just 17 points a game. They're first in yards allowed, first against, uh, against the pass, and fourth against the run. This is a tough defense to, to do anything against, really. And, you know, they got a very tough uh, defense. They've got 26 sacks on the year, uh, 26 sacks on the season. And they're very tough to, to protect. They got, uh, you know, they got, um, they're on a blank on the name, DeMarcus Ware coming off one side, and then they got Von Miller coming off the other. And they got a pretty solid defensive line. Uh, they do run a 3-4. Um, but it's a very, very good, aggressive 3-4. Wade Phillips is running things now in the, at, at the defensive coordinator position, and his main coverages are cover three and two mixed with man. He generally rushes four, um, but he's not afraid to send a lot, and the uh, coverage has been very good uh, when teams try to pass the ball. And they have 17, they've uh, seven, forced uh, the, the other team into 17 uh, turnovers so far this year. Uh, defense, like I said, defensive line is good. They're hungry. They're they're tough. And Von Miller is a, a Demarcus Ware coming off the edge. Very scary. Um, secondary is very tough to throw on. Uh, Talib is uh, he's returned two picks for touchdowns so far this uh, this season. Chris Harris has been playing really good football. Darren Stewart's been playing pretty good. Uh, Bradley Roby. So there's going to be a tough defense to throw on for the Packers. A very very tough defense to throw on. Um, obviously, the number one key for the Packers' offense, they got to keep Aaron Rodgers upright. They can't allow the Broncos to start getting sacks. And part of the reason why the Broncos, I think, are so good at uh, getting sacked because teams can't run on them. I think the Packers have to be uh, attempt to run the football on them. And they got to test the, the coverage abilities of their slot guys. The you know, Packers, the time Montgomery played, they got him, they got Randall Cobb. You know, and then they then they have Richard Rodgers, three guys that could touch catch the ball in the uh, in the slot and going across the middle. They got to attack that part of the defense of the Broncos. They got to make them make the uh, make the Broncos chase. But what I expect the Broncos to do is basically play uh, two safeties over the top, Troy. 
uh, two safeties over the top, and dare the Packers to run on them. Be like, try to run on them. Uh, because they don't want it, uh, Rodgers to beat them through the air. I think the, I think the offense is going to struggle to move the football all game. Uh, it's going to be tough scoring points offensively, but as long as the Packers can take care of the football, uh, quick quick passes, protect Rodgers, uh, kind of like the, the game plan they did a few weeks ago. Um, I think it was against Seattle when they were getting the ball out in a hurry. Um, against the Rams, they were just getting the ball out in a hurry. That's what they got to do. Rodgers can't do seven-step drops. He's got to quick drop back, throw, and get the ball out and let his playmakers like Randall Cobb and James Jones uh, pile up yards after the catch and maybe get the screen game going a little bit. They bet he laces back to 100%. But the the thin air in Denver does worry me with Eddie Lacy, as we, we know Eddie Lacy suffers from asthma. And that thin air, uh, running in that uh, thin air, when he's not used to it, could make a couple flare-ups. So we hope that doesn't happen. But like I said, offensively, I have I see a hard time uh, for the Packers moving the football. I, I hope I'm wrong, but I, I could see the offense struggling to put points on the board. What are your thoughts on the Packers' offense? Well, it's going to be tough, like you said. This is a Denver defense that – is probably, in my mind right now, carrying this team. The reason the Broncos are 6-0 is because of the defense. And people are going to go back, and those that watch football on prime time remember the Kansas City Chiefs game. I mean, that was a game, honestly, that the Chiefs probably could have won. But you look at this defense that can get after the quarterback, they – don't allow you to score touchdowns. And we've talked about this a number of times with the Packers, red zone efficiency, being able to find that go-to guy and put seven points on the board. They can't kick field goals against Denver. They're going to have to get in the end zone. And when you think of Denver and Green Bay, you normally think, wow, that's going to be a shootout. This game, in my mind, is actually going to be probably one of more of those grinded out type games when you got two defenses that are actually propelling these teams to their six and0 record. Now, I'm still going to give the edge to the Packer offense when you compare offense to offense, but when you look at the Packers offense versus the Denver defense, the one thing that the Green Bay will need to do is move the chains, wear this defense out. And what that means is they have to try and limit the number of three and outs. Keep this defense on the field for a long time. They play with a high motor and a lot of energy. And they bring it, play in and play out. But if you can win the time of possession battle, you can run a lot more plays than they're, than they're used to, you may at some point be able to wear them down just a little bit. And so the key for the Packers, in my mind, Evan, is really the old adage, and people say, well, isn't that common sense? They need to take what they give them, and they need to be very efficient. So if they're going to get after the quarterback and they're going to pin their ears back, well, then they might have to think about doing some screen passes and some short dump-off passes to try and neutralize the rush for one or two seconds. If the running game is not there, they still have to stick and they still have to try to establish a running game. You played offensive line, Evan. I've asked you this question a million times. I know the answer, but for those new listeners that may be listening to our show, as an offensive lineman, how important is it for you as an offensive lineman to be able to pound your chest when you say you're dominating the run game against a defensive line? Well, especially when you're playing a defensive line like the Broncos, it's kind of, uh, you know, builds the ego a little bit. If you're able to run the ball successfully on them, you know, you're going to you're gonna do it. It's, it's very important. And this is a, a defensive line where it's going to be tough to do it, but they, they got to keep trying to get the run going. They, they have to. And, you know, if the offensive line gets beat at the point of attack by the D-line, it's going to be a long game. And uh, as someone that's played offensive line, it's uh, 
you know, something that, uh, you know, the offensive lines take pride in when they're, when they, they're able to manhandle the, uh, the defensive line of the other team. Yeah, and, you know, the big thing here, Evan, is yards are going to be a premium for the Packers, and that's why I said they need to, they need to try and establish some drives because you had, you had thrown some, some stats out, and against the pass, they're not even allowing 200 yards passing. And I think a lot of it is because they're getting quick pressure. So one way when, when they're pinning their ears back, and I think a lot of that has to do down in distance allowing that to happen, but if Green Bay can establish some type of running game, it doesn't have to be 200 yards, doesn't have to be the most rushing yards in an NFL game, but if they have some resemblance that, hey, we can still run the ball, we may get 2-3 here and there, 2-3 here and there, but, hey, we're going to break off an 8- or 9-yarder, if that threat is still there, it can neutralize just a little bit of that pass rush, and that's what the Packers need to do so normally this is a Packer team, Evan, where the pass sets up the run. It's almost like I'm looking at Sunday night saying the run may need to set up the pass. The, the Broncos pass defense, very good. Total defense, very good. Not even 300 yards a game. It's going to be a tough one. They've got to take the yards as the Broncos are going to give them. They can't turn the ball over. They have to be very protective of the football. They, and a lot of that, of course, is on Aaron Rodgers, his decision-making. Usually it's A-plus. I'm going to knock on some wood as I say that. But ball security is going to be a key on Sunday night. You just can't turn the ball over against a stingy defense, and you have to try to move the chains. And the only way to move the chains, you can do it with a short passing game, but at some point the Packers have to stick to the running game. That's my key offensively, Evan. Yeah, and that's a big key to get us to the running game because uh, that's going to help keep Aaron Rodgers upright. If they don't stick to the running game and they they try to throw the football like 40 times, it's going to be a very long day for, for Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay, and I don't see how they come up with the win if that's how, how they're going to uh, play the game. But with that said, looking at the time, we do got to jump to a break. Um, we come back from the break, we're going to talk about when the uh, – when the uh, the defense, when the Packers are on defense, what they need to do to uh, stop this Broncos offense, which has been struggling as of late this season. The question is, will those struggles continue, or will Peyton Manning uh, pick off where uh, uh, pick up where Philip Rivers left off? That's going to be the question when we come back in in about a minute. You're listening to the Green Bay Packers edition of the Grueling Truth. This is former All-Pro Leon Searcy. I've got a new interactive app called Gridiron Mobile, where you get to call the plays, offense, or defense, and a live NFL game. You get to interact with other fans, pick the play, pick the call. That's Gridiron Mobile. And welcome back to the Green Bay Packers edition of The Grueling Truth. We spent the first por- portion of the show talking when the Packers had the ball, what they need to do. Troy and I are both in agreement that they have to be able to establish the run because this is not a team you want to throw on, you know, 35 and 40 times. You've got to get the run game going. But it's going to be difficult for Green Bay to get the run game going with the injury that they have with James Starks and now Eddie, uh, Eddie Lacy and now James Starks. Hopefully Eddie Lacy is healthy enough to be the Eddie Lacy that we know he has been. But the, the scary thing is that it's playing in the high altitude and the asthma. That could affect Eddie Lacy's reps a little bit. And if James Stark's hip injury does not allow him to play, he did not practice today and uh, spent the entire bye week rather than going home and spending time with family. He spent it rehabbing that hip. So that's a storyline to watch. So now we got to switch over to when the, the Broncos have the ball. And the Broncos, as everyone knows, they are uh, led by Peyton Manning as quarterback. Gary Kubiak is the off is the head coach, uh, but he he calls the plays. Uh, the pistol the formation has been the compromise, uh, as you know, article for Bob McGinn saying uh, between Kubiak's bootleg movement background and Peyton Manning's preferred shotgun call game at the uh, at the line tactics. They run a lot of run zone uh, a zone run game feature, so it's out of zone blocking in their running game. And the, the running game is led by Ronnie Hillman, who has 323 yards. 
on 66 carries and two touchdowns. And C.J. Anderson, who had a very good year last year, but he can kind of struggle in 67 carries for 180 yards, 2.7 yards per carry average. Um, a wide receiver, they got Emmanuel Sanders, who has 38 catches for 527 and three touchdowns. And Demarius Thomas, 48 catches for 527 and a touchdown. Outside of that, the Broncos don't really have much more at the wide receiver position. Owen Daniels has 14 catches. C.J. Anderson has 13. And Jordan Norwood has 11. And Benny Fowler has 7 for 107. So not a lot of wide receiver options that Peyton Manning is using this year other than Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, Peyton Manning has 7 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Not Peyton Manning-like, 10 interceptions on the year. And he has looked, um, how do I word it? He has looked his age at times this year. There has been times where he's looked quite good, but other times he's really looked his age where he's struggled to get the ball out. Uh, his balls that he's throwing are, are literally ducks, and they don't quite uh, get where they need to. The weak link on the Broncos' offense uh, has to be the offensive mm-hmm. line position. They are without uh, Ryan Clady, who uh, he's been out all year with the knee injury. Um, that's probably the biggest uh, the biggest uh, issue there. He's been a pro, so, pro, pro Bowl selection in 9, 13, and 14, but he suffered a season and knee injury in May. The Broncos attempt to pick up the pieces with their position coach, uh, but they've had uh, a lot of injuries along the offensive line. They've been pretty good at protecting Manning, as Manning's also good at getting the ball out in a hurry, He's only been sacked 12 times this year, pretty much the same amount that Aaron Rodgers has been sacked. But Manning does get the ball out quick. That's mm-hmm. the one area that the Packers might be able to exploit Peyton Manning a little bit, if they could get that pass rush, especially up the middle. Peyton Manning doesn't move too well left to right anymore. He's good when he can step up in the pocket. So if you can get Clay Matthews coming up the middle, this is where B.J. Rodgers is going to be key to. Get that push by B.J. Rodgers up the middle send Clay Matthews up that middle, don't give Peyton Manning any room to step up in the pocket, and you can catch him off the edge. Because uh, if he has to move left or right, his, he, he's, not, he's never been that guy that can, uh, can escape the pocket uh, left or right. He likes to climb the pocket. He's your traditional Don Mar- Dan Marino, Johnny Unitas, uh, you know, you know, you're going to do your, 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 uh, your drops and you're going to, Instead of trying to roll out, you're going to, as I said, climb the pocket. That's how you're going to try to get the ball. So B.J. Rodgers is going to be key in this game. He's going to have to clog the middle and get the ground around Peyton Manning messy. Um, he's going to have to create piles in the middle of that field so Peyton Manning can't step up. Then you get Clay Matthews coming up the middle after him. Uh, you're going to try, Then Manning's going to try to flush out the pocket, and that's where you're going to get him. As I said, he doesn't flush out the pocket there. Uh, running game, the Packers should be okay trying to stop the running game now that B.J. Raji's healthy and back. Uh, but Ronnie Hillman can uh, take over a game, and that's the one area they got to be careful. He's got a, he's got a long of uh, 72 on the year, and he's a guy that has been lately able to take, up, uh, take over a game. But the Packers' defense should do okay, and it's all about getting pressure on Matt. Uh, Broncos are 29th in total yards. 18th passing the football and 30th running the ball. But Ronnie Hillman's really come on as of late, so that's, I think that uh, total uh, offense with running the ball is a little skewed from earlier in the year, and they were struggling quite a bit. But I can see the Packers making, uh, giving Peyton Manning fits, and Peyton Manning's been throwing a lot of interceptions this year, and I think the Packers are going to score on defense, either a fumble recovery for touchdown, or they're going to intercept Peyton Manning, uh, Sam Shields or uh, Casey Hayward or Randall, they're going to intercept Manning and take it in for a touchdown. And, you know, I'm going to give my prediction right now. That's why I think the Packers win is it's going to be a low-scoring game. I think it's going to end up being, uh, you know, like a 21-17 to 17 type game. And uh, there's going to be a pick six in there that uh, puts the Packers ahead. Um, I don't see how this is a high-scoring game. And people are probably thinking I'm nuts, saying I'm gonna, they're going to hold the Broncos at just 20, uh, 17 points and they score 23 on the year. But I think it's going to be a 21-17 to 17 type game with the Packers winning. So what are your thoughts on the defense, and what is your prediction? 
Well, I can just add to what you're saying. You know, up front, they got to win up front. And it's amazing that I'm. this is going to come out of my mouth, but I think what the Broncos have figured out, Evan, is that Peyton Manning is on his last go-round. And people will argue and say, well, he can make the throws. And what I'm looking at right now and what I'm seeing is I think Gary Kubiak realizes that Peyton Manning is getting old now. And his decision-making is always going to be there. It's just a matter of getting the ball out quickly and where it needs to be. I think you had mentioned Ronnie Hillman stepping it up, and that's because Gary Kubiak is realizing it's time to take the ball out of Peyton Manning's hand. It really is. And we we mentioned this with Tony Romo. You, You don't want the ball in Tony Romo's hand when he has a running game. He looks like a lot better quarterback. I think what you're seeing now is that Peyton Manning used to be the guy. Just put the ball in Peyton Manning's hand. Let him win you the game. And I think Gary Kubiak's realizing we can't do that anymore with Peyton Manning. We need to establish a running game. Therefore, you're seeing Manny Hillman getting more involved, trying to get more running going to limit the amount of times that Peyton Manning has to throw the ball. One of the reasons you mentioned Peyton Manning can't move. So if your offensive line cannot hold up and you go up against a good cover team, he's going to get hit, he's going to get sacked, he's going to throw interceptions, and if you don't have a running game, basically you're going to be screwed. And that's why I believe that they're trying to establish Ronnie Hillman. They're trying to actually maybe flip the table a little bit so that Peyton Manning does not have to have the ball in his hand to win games. Now, I'm not saying that he can't do it, but the numbers are not backing up anybody that says Peyton Manning is the guy that can have the ball in his hand and throw it 40 times. You know, offensively, this team is not the Denver Broncos team that went to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. This team is 6-0 and because of their defense. I think the Packers have a great matchup. I think they can win up front. I think they can win at the wide receiver position. And matching up against this team defensively, Evan, does not scare me. It doesn't scare me when I look at the Green Bay Packer defense against the, the Bronco offense. Primarily, Peyton Manning, like you said, cannot move. And if they can generate the pass rush that they have been, I think they'll be able to pressure Manning into some quick throws before it needs to be made, which should equal a few turnovers. And they're going to have to capitalize. That's my one concern. I've seen it a couple times this year, Evan. Opportunity for an interception, we let it go by the wayside. If the defensive back has an opportunity to secure an interception, they have to do it, especially against the Broncos. Because we just talked about it in the first half of the show, yards are going to be at a premium, points are going to be at a premium, every turnover is going to be crucial. I like your prediction that the defense can score. I hope you're right there. I'm going to give you my one wow factor, my key that I think is going to be what turns the tide on Sunday night. When you got two teams like this, where defensively they're going to bring it, and they're going to cause fits for the other offense, which means low scoring, which now that you and I think it will be low scoring, it will probably be like 45 to 42. But on paper, when you look at a game like this, when the defenses should be dominant, that other area that we talk about becomes so crucial, and that's special teams. I think the Green Bay Packers return a punt for a touchdown, and I think that is the difference in the game. It's going to be that punt return for a touchdown that is the difference in the game. I think the Packers win this one, Evan, 23-17. to 17. That's my prediction. So what was the prediction again? 23-17. I think the Packers oh, – uh, I think – that's yeah, we're always we're, we're always really close. And just so the listeners know, Evan and I don't tell each other our score or our prediction before we get on the air. So I think I had mentioned earlier, Evan, that the Packers can't kick field goals, but I think they're going to end up having to kick three. Uh, I, this, this Denver defense is just really good. You cannot – you look at them, you watch them, you look at the stats, and they're just strong. You know, every team has weaknesses and they have their plays where they're not so good. 
But this Broncos team against the pass is good. Against the run is good. In the red zone, they're good. Creating turnovers, they're good. This is just a damn good defense. I think there's going to be a couple drives. The Packers have to settle for field goals three times. I think they only score one offensive touchdown. Like I said, I think they get one in special teams. That changes the tide. And I think they win 23-17. Yep. So, yeah, I just wanted to, like I said, double-check the score because it seems like we're always uh, extremely close in score. So with that said, uh, I do want to thank you for giving us a listen. If you want to hear more from Troy and I, make sure you check out the RedLightSportsNetwork.com. That's the RedLightSportsNetwork.com. Uh, we, uh, from the Red Light Sports Network, we're co-founders of that site and that, uh, that network. And out of that, we do have the, the Red Light Sports Ramble as well as a lot of other stuff going on on the site, so make sure you check it out. And uh, with that said, I want to thank you once again for listening. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the weekend. And, uh, and until next week, you have been listening to the Green Bay Packers edition of The Grueling Truth presented by Grid Iron Mall. Have a good night and good uh, rest of the week, everyone. We'll get back at you next Wednesday night.